Oh my goodness. Oh, she's looking good. I feel like I'm getting a little weird. How is it? So good? 10 out of 10 dinosaurs. 10 out of 10 dinosaurs, I'll take it. My channel today I'm gonna to be sharing a huge beginning of the week produce and meal prep we're getting prepped and prepared for the week ahead I recently shared a huge beginning of the month grocery haul from Costco and Kroger in that haul I bought a ton of meat in bulk and I recorded how I break it down for storing in the freezer and using for upcoming meal preps the rest of the month. We are gonna be using some of it in today's meal prep. I also did a quick pop out to the store for more fresh fruit for this coming week. And we have to prep all that produce so it's cleaned, ready to go for easy, quick and healthy snacks and side dishes throughout the week. We're gonna be making some homemade pickles, a couple different meal preps for lunches and dinners. That way we have some great, healthy, easy options on hand for our busy week ahead. So we got a lot to do today. Let's get cooking so we are prepped and prepared for the week. I bought a ton of fresh berries at the store this weekend. So we have strawberries, raspberries, and blueberries that I'm going to be washing and storing for the week. When it comes to berries and getting them to last as long as possible in the refrigerator, I like to start with a freshly clean sink, fill the basin about a quarter of the way with some cool water, and then I add a half a cup of white distilled vinegar. This helps to get rid of any of the bacteria and dirt left on the berries from the store packaging. I give them all a good rinse, let them sit in the solution for about a minute, and then move them to a strainer. Smaller or more delicate berries, I like to go ahead and use the strainer to rinse them. It's a little bit more gentle and you don't have any runaways. dry as much as possible in the colanders. I'll transfer them to my produce saver bins. These are great because they help wick away water and moisture and they really keep my produce super fresh for at least a week if not longer. How long exactly? I'll never know because my kids will eat these up well within a week. I also purchased some baby carrots and mini bell peppers for snacking on. I'm also going to give these a rinse, let them dry, and also store them in my food saver bins. Having these bins full of fresh produce, berries, and veggies is a huge help during the week when I'm looking for a quick, healthy side dish to serve with dinners. So I love to just pull out our fruit and veggie bins. Sometimes we'll pull out some dips to go on the side, and it really helps simplify things. Sometimes I'll tuck an extra paper towel in the top of the bin and store them upside down in the refrigerator just for like the first 24 hours, just to make sure all of the extra moisture is wicked away and out of the bin for long-term storage. Next, we've been loving having some tasty zero-point beverages available to drink throughout the day. So in my double decanters, I'm going to be mixing up some raspberry lemonade. In the second pitcher, I'm also brewing plain unsweetened black tea. You can enjoy these separately or mix them together for delicious iced raspberry tea. Next, I have a tip for all of my pickle lovers out there. Don't get rid of your leftover pickle juice. Instead, make the most simple and delicious quick pickle right at home. An extra English cucumber, slice it super thin, and when you've gone through all your pickles, just add them to the existing pickle brine juice in the jar. As long as it's within its expiration date, you can reuse that brine. These are not gonna be as intensely sour or flavored as the ones purchased in the brine, but it gives a great easy way to make your own quickle pickle, a quick pickle at home. Pop the cucumbers into the brine, close them up and refrigerate them. And after only a couple hours, they'll start tasting like the most delicious, fresh and crunchy, slightly sour and sweet pickles. Pickle perfection, I'm telling you. And I'm storing any leftover cucumber slices in a container for easy snacking with hummus during the week. 
two pickle recipes in one meal prep video? Why, yes. Yes, we are. I'm sharing with you guys my favorite pickled red onion recipe. These are such a great condiment to keep on hand in the refrigerator. They add a huge pop of flavor and crunchy texture to a variety of dishes, and they're super simple to throw together. For the brine, combine one cup of water, one cup of white distilled vinegar, one cup of red wine vinegar, two bay leaves, two teaspoons of whole peppercorns, two tablespoons of sugar, two teaspoons of salt, and three whole garlic cloves. Transfer the brine to a pot and simmer on medium heat until all ingredients are combined. And then remove from the heat and let it cool slightly. While the brine is cooling, I like to slice up my red onions, removing the peel and then doing nice thin slices. The thinner the slice, the more flavor you're gonna get soaked into the onion. Separate out all the strands of onion and then tuck them into a container. I prefer a glass jar. After straining the brine, I'm gonna pour just the liquid over the onions until they're all submerged. Push the onions down into the mixture and you can even tuck a paper towel on top to help hold them under the brine while they pickle. Refrigerate for at least two hours before using, but then they'll keep for up to two weeks. They pack a ton of flavor and a great crunch. My favorite way to use them is on top of avocado toast or on top of a grain bowl. We purchased our proteins in bulk for the month at Costco, and this is how I break them down to keep them in the freezer for easy use throughout the month. Starting with our bulk pack of skinless, boneless chicken breast. These are perfect from Costco as is. They come packaged up with two breasts per package segment, and they're very easy just to slice apart, stack, and put in the freezer. That way I can grab out one pack at a time, depending on how much I need for each meal. So in our big grocery haul, we got a huge package of 8812 lean ground beef. I broke the package down. We got five one pound segments. And then the last that was left over was about a pound and a half. So I just split it into two equal portions. And then the one pound portions, I'm gonna go ahead and use these one gallon freezer Ziploc bags. I'm gonna place one portion each into each one of these bags and roll it so it lays flat. That will help me save space in the freezer as I store them. And they thaw super quick when I need to get one out for a meal. I pull it out just a couple hours before I need it for dinner and it's totally thawed in time. And then from there, I can toss it into spaghetti sauce, make tacos, form up some hamburger patties and make burgers for the grill. The large slab of Atlantic salmon we purchased, I just broke down into approximately five ounce portions. The triangular tail segment on a large filet, I like to just dice up into chunks and they're perfect for marinating and popping into the air fryer. I use them to top salads or on top of bowls. And then the filets I like to wrap in parchment paper individually before placing in a gallon size freezer bag. That way they don't stick together and you can just grab out however many portions you need for that meal. All of those proteins have been prepped and in our freezer in storage. Back to today's meal prep, I'm pulling out one pound of ground beef and making some homemade meatballs that are going to go with our dinner tonight. Pasta, sauce, and meatballs is always a big hit with my family. But because I'm having a busy meal prep day, I want to get these meatballs prepped this afternoon and I'm going to tuck them in the crock pot with my homemade pasta sauce to finish cooking. And then all I have to do is make up the pasta of our choice when the kiddos and I are ready to sit down for dinner. For the low point pasta sauce, I'm using the Kirkland organic tomato sauce, onion powder, garlic powder, Italian seasoning, some crushed red pepper flakes, just a pinch, and then salt and pepper to taste. I'm gonna mix all of this together in the crock pot, add my seared meatballs and just let them cook on low until we're ready for dinner. You can easily lighten up this meal by swapping out the ground beef for some ground turkey. It's also really delicious over some zucchini zoodles instead of regular pasta noodles. And this also makes a great prep if you wanna prep the meatballs ahead and then 
package them with either noodles or zoodle pasta noodles for lunch prep throughout the week. I'll definitely be using some of these leftovers as one of my meal options this week. Okay, I had to take a quick pause, hang out with the kids for a bit. I got dinner going. They are very covered in pasta sauce. Is it good? How is it? So good? 10 out of 10 dinosaurs. 10 out of 10 dinosaurs, I'll take it. Anyway, dinner came out super good, but very messy. So I'll be back after bath and bedtime and we'll finish up our meal preps for the week, some lunch and dinner options. That'll be quick grab and go because it's a busy week ahead. While I was prepping everything else this morning, I did go ahead and pull out one pack of chicken breast as well as two salmon fillets that I had prepped from the freezer. And these are gonna serve as the main proteins for our meal preps. And I'm not gonna lie, I've struggled a little bit with my eating on the WW plan the last couple weeks. I've been really focused on trying to get my 10,000 steps a day in for my challenge this month. And I feel like making sure I'm eating within my points has kind of fallen by the wayside. So I wanna make sure I am prepped for this week. I have some easy meals ready to go that I know the points of ahead of time. And hopefully we'll have some good success on the scale this week. I'm back, I survived bedtime. I'm starting to look a little disheveled. It is getting near the end of the night when I wanna be done with this prep. So let's finish it off. I opened up that pack of chicken. They're perfectly defrosted now. I went ahead and gave them a rinse, patted them dry, and now I'm gonna prep it for going on the grill by spraying it with some avocado oil spray. That'll help it not stick to the grill and also so our seasoning stick. I'm seasoning today with some pink Himalayan salt, some black pepper, as well as some of this Kinder's wood-fired garlic seasoning. This is a great all-purpose seasoning. It adds great flavor, but it also goes with a variety of sides. So it is an easy way to batch prep a bunch of chicken, even if you're using it for different meals. As a side dish, I'm preparing some blanched asparagus. To prep this, I trimmed the bottoms off of a bunch of asparagus. I'm putting them in salted boiling water for two to three minutes until the color turns bright green. They've just barely started to soften up but still have a good snap to them. And transfer them immediately into an ice bath to cool down and stop the cooking process. I'm also gonna get the salmon going in the air fryer. I have two just over five ounce portions here. They're fully defrosted. I patted them dry, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the spray avocado oil on, salt, pepper, and on these, I'm gonna do a little bit of garlic powder and onion powder. These are the asparagus that I blanched, and those are gonna be part of the side dish to this meal, so I have them pulled to the side. This is gonna be so simple. It's going into the air fryer on 400 degrees, and they'll cook for about six to eight minutes, depending on your preferred doneness. For the vegetables, I'm gonna be chopping up some washed red potatoes into even sized chunks. And I'm also going to be grilling some zucchini. This is one of my favorite veggies to prep. Grilling them just takes them to the next level. I cut them in half and then I score them on the diagonal. This allows for little grooves all throughout the zucchini and whatever seasoning you use on it really gets in there and flavors the whole veg. I'm gonna spray them with a little avocado oil spray, do a little salt, and then I'm also gonna be using the Kinder's wood-fired garlic seasoning on these, rubbing the seasoning in just a little bit so it gets in between all those grooves before I pop it on the grill. The 
The final veg prep is just chopping up some of these mini bell peppers, de-seeding them, and also cutting up some thick slices of red onion. And now to prep the potatoes. Yes, going in again with my handy dandy avocado oil spray. Yes guys, I use this on everything. It's zero points for the most part, unless you use like a ridiculous amount per serving. Um, I always count it as zero points anyway. And it's easy. <laughs> All right, so I just give this a little toss. Get them coated. They're going on the side of the salmon along with the blanched asparagus. So I'm just gonna do salt, pepper, some garlic, and maybe a little bit of rosemary. I can tell it's getting late and I'm starting to get unfocused from this very long day of meal prepping on and off throughout the day. Honestly, if you had the time to dedicate just like two hours, you could have gotten all this done at one go. But since I was home alone with the two kids all day, I've had to take breaks here and there. So anyway, I'm feeling a little unorganized, but we're still gonna get it done. I have my proteins cooked. I have my veggies all chopped up. I'm about to put the potatoes in the air fryer. And yes, a more organized, smarter Lauren would have done the veggies in the air fryer first and then cooked my salmon in the air fryer because no one wants all of their veggies to taste like salmon but I didn't. So instead I did go ahead and wash my air fryer and now I'm putting the veggies in. I cannot wait. I need to order more air fryer liners. I got them to try them out recently and they are a game changer if you use your air fryer a lot or for multiple things for one meal or for meal prep. They're like parchment liners that are disposable that you can just toss instead of washing your air fryer between everything. I know it's not exactly low waste, but when you're doing a big meal prep like this, it's really gonna save you time and convenience and I really wish I had them now. So I'll put a link in the description box if you guys are curious about what I'm talking about and need more information. So anyway, these are going in the air fryer. And my peppers and onions are also gonna go in the fryer when the potatoes are done. So we're just gonna reuse this little bowl and toss them all in. Again, we're gonna just coat them with a little bit of avocado oil and some salt and pepper. Super simple. My plan was to grill these, but I can't find our veggie grill basket, and I think the pieces are too small, they'll fall through, so that's why I love the air fryer. It's my backup catch-all. Yes, it is now dark outside. Let's do a little check on our zucchini. Oh, she's looking good. I'm getting there, a little firm yet. Oh, grilled zucchini, game changer. All right, zucchinis are done. They smell so good. I'm just gonna give them a little chop so they're in smaller pieces for our bowls. Drinking some raspberry tea a little combination of our raspberry lemonade and black unsweetened tea. I feel like I'm getting a little weird. I'm sorry, it's 8.30, it's almost my bedtime. We are in the final push, we can do it. Get meal prepped. And while the last of the veggies cook in the air fryer, I have two cups of water here in a pot on the stove. I'm gonna use the Better Than Bouillon chicken to make some chicken broth. You could just use two cups of broth or even two cups of water. I just find cooking, um, we're gonna be making some white quinoa in broth, gives it so much flavor and I don't feel the need to add like butter or oil or anything else. It's so, so good. So anyway, I'm gonna make this into two cups of broth. Once it reaches a simmer, I'm gonna add one cup of this white quinoa, cover it and let it simmer for like 12 to 15 minutes. And this is gonna be the base to our chicken bowl. We're gonna add all those delicious grilled veggies and air fried veggies.
forgot you were here. I have cleaned up the kitchen. Well, ignore the couple pots in the sink. I'm not doing those tonight. Thank you guys for following along my very long day of meal prepping. Meal prepping doesn't have to be a long, giant day. I just personally broke mine up into a small, like 20 minute segments because it's what I had to do to get it done. So sometimes I'm really great. I have like two focused hours and I get a meal prep done. Other days are more like this. And by the end of the night, I don't know what I've made. So I'm looking forward to watching this video, seeing what I made and what's in my fridge. I hope you guys enjoyed following along my produce and meal prep for the week. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And until next time, bye.